Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz Introduction Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz was among the highly ranked scholars of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which was referred to as the Grand Mufti from 1993 to 1999. He also headed the Prevention of Vice and Virtue Propagation Committee in Saudi Arabia. The committee advocated for the things that are proper, permissible, correct, and acceptable within Saudi Arabia based on Islamic teachings. Describing the biography of Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz, call to Islam laments, his decisions were unchanged and his retrogressive opinions were given great prominence in Saudi Arabia. Arguably, his respect in the public forums accrued from his traits characterized by bearditedness, feel affection for the widows, underprivileged, and orphans, humility, and integrity. Because of his high-caliber education combined with these traits, Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz was accorded high respect in Saudi Arabia. Some of his rulings especially the ones related to the subject of cosmology, issues on women rights, and the appropriateness of the decision to station various foreign troop in the soil of Saudi Arabia in the era of Gulf War were often contentious thus attracting hefty controversies. The aim of this paper is to discuss and describe the life of Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz from his childhood to his death. An effort is also made to describe his works and contributions to the society of Saudi Arabia. His childhood and youth. Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz was born on 21 November, the month of Dhu al-Hijjah, 1910 in the city of Riyadh. His love for Islam reflected in his later life was largely contributed by the fact that he was born in a family that had a magnificent love for Islamic religion and its teachings. Unfortunately, he lost his father at a tender age. Commenting on his father's death, Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz is quoted by Call to Islam saying, My father died when I was three years old, I only had my mother who took care of me and educated me encouraging me to learn more about Shira, she also died when I was 26. His mother was incredibly instrumental in bringing Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz up and or helping him to develop the capacity to memorize the Quran fluently by the age of 14 years. She also aided him to study a couple of Islamic books. Nevertheless, economic life for him was not very easy when he was 13 years old. He worked with Muhammad, his elder brother, in the market where they sold men's gowns. Although Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz played pivotal roles in supporting his single-parent family, he never at any time forgot or ignored to study Hadith, Quran, Tafsir, and Fiqh. He started to lose eyesight at the age of 16. This challenge culminated from the infliction by infections in the ice. This ailment continued so that at the age of 40 years, Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz became blind. However, blindness did not shudder his love and desire for knowledge. He completely dedicated his life to study Islamic books. Apart from learning from the books, he also interacted and learned more aspects of Islam from a myriad of sheikhs. Education. During the early years of Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz, there were no formal schools as they are today in Saudi Arabia. Nevertheless, as discussed before, Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz got an opportunity to acquire an immense knowledge on Islam via his undying effort to read literature on Islam coupled with the scholarly aid from the sheikhs. Sheikh Muhammad bin Ibrahim Abdul Latif al-Sheikh was one of the sheikhs. Indeed, Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz spent about 10 years with the sheikh. The sheikh later picked him to become al Qarj judge. According to Call to Islam, other sheikhs who were instrumental to education of Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz on Islamic matter included Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Latif bin Hassan al-Sheikh -Sheik and Sheikh Saad bin Hamad bin Atik, the judge of Riyadh city at that time. In the narration of the education history of Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz, Sheikh Hamad bin Faris and Sheikh Saad Waqas al-Bukhari cannot go unmentioned. While Sheikh Hamad bin Faris helped him to master Arabic grammar, Sheikh Saad Waqas al-Bukhari was an outstanding scholar in the field of Tajweed. Therefore, Sheikh Saad Waqas al-Bukhari helped Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin to master the reading of the Holy Quran. His achievements? Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin stood out as an outstanding example of good Muslim youth among those who lived in his time. According to Business and Finance Club, his main concern, besides studying Sharat, was Dawa both inside and outside the country. He also got involved in a myriad of activities of charitable organizations. These activities included the undying support of all Dawa organization coupled with various Islamic centers situated across the globe. He also facilitated the establishment coupled with the supervision of various schools which offered teachings on the Holy Quran. His biographers refer the effort as one that was inspired by his love for Islamic religion.
Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz also took central roles in the foundation of an organization that facilitates marriage for Muslim youth. Arguably, this achievement spelt out the unquenchable thirst for Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin to establish a society that was founded on strong Islamic religious principles. His career and job titles Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz had a well-built career profile. Between 1938 and 1951, he was recommended to serve as al kharj judge by his Sheikh Abdul Latif Sheikh. In 1951, he was given a teaching opportunity at Mahid al ilmi On his transfer to Riyadh, he taught at the Faculty of Sharia in the Institute for Science in Riyadh between 1951 and 1961. Later, in 1961, Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz was appointed as the deputy leader of the Islamic University of Medina. Later, he was confirmed the head of the same university. Following the death of the chancellor of the university, Muhammad bin Ibrahim al-Ash Sheikh in 1970, he assumed his position until 1975. He quitted from this position in 1975 when a royal decree named him the chairman of the Department of Scientific Research and IFTA with the rank of minister. In 1992, Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz was appointed to take the position of Grand Mufti of the Republic of Saudi Arabia. Serving in this capacity, he was also put in charge of the head of the Council of Senior Scholars and was granted presidency of the Administration for Scientific Research and Legal Rulings. Until his death, he also held other positions including the presidency of the Permanent Committee for Research and Fatawa. He was a member and the president of Global League for Muslims Constituent Assembly. Besides, he served as a member of Islamic Dawah Higher Committee for Saudi Arabia among others. Writings, lectures, and his teaching. Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz gave several lectures coupled with speeches either confidentially or openly in the mosques. Although the sermons and lectures were many, they revolved around common themes. Such themes included the position of Islam in the world coupled with specific issues that influenced Islamic Ummah or nations. His lessons were drawn from the Fajr prayers, meetings with delegations from the Muslim nations, and sittings with people when Maghrib prayers were concluded and or while attempting to resolve people's problems and helping the needy. Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz also delivered lessons to people he invited to have lunch with after prayers of Isha. Normally, Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin was preoccupied with many tasks such as his ministerial job. However, he also managed to secure time to address various issues afflicting the Muslims through his books. It is important to note now that Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin's books were over 60 different copies. Their full discussion is beyond the scope of this paper. Nevertheless, it is crucial to pinpoint that all his books addressed a number of issues all fitting subject matters like tafsir, fiqh, hadith, fariyad, and ta'id. Some of the books also touched on issues such as zakat, umrah, salat, hajj, and dawah. Although the entire Muslim community respected and applauded his works, they did not go without criticisms. The next section scrutinizes the critical reception of Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz's ideas and opinions. Critical reception of his important work and ideas. Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz's position on women's rights attracted many criticisms. For instance, Abu Khalil described him as being unnecessarily harsh on women by arguing that he had an altitude that was inflexible towards women. Marshall also accused him for being a bulwark of restrictions on women rights. Both Abu Khalil and Marshall drew their argument from the Sharia law provision that testimonies in courts of law provided by a single woman were not sufficient. In this regard, Marshall quotes Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz's argument that women's shortcoming in reasoning is found in the fact that their memory is weak and that their witness is in need of another woman to corroborate it. Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz also went in the record to have issued fatawa unfairly against women who drove cars. Another issue that put Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz in the light of criticisms is the issuance of a fatawa on the Gulf War issues. He issued fatawa, which gave permission for deployment of troops coming from non-Muslims nations in the soils of Saudi Arabia. The sole mandate of the troops was to defend the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia from the Iraqi army. Some critics such as Keppel argue that this decision opposed the position held by Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz in 1940 in which he was opposed to the deployment of troops from the non-Muslims nation in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. With regard to Jell, his fatawa overruled more radical clerics. Responding to these criticisms, Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz is quoted by Jell condemning those who whisper secretly in their meetings and record their poison over cassettes distributed to the people.
This argument means that, contradictory or not, Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz's decisions were appropriate, if at all they meant protection of life. Osama bin Laden also criticized him claiming that he was flexible, weak, and prone to influence. This criticism arose from Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz's decision to endorse Oslo's peace accords signed between Israel and PLO. However, he defended his position. To support his positions, he cited the Hudaybiyya Treaty claiming that peace treaty, even with non-Muslim nations, was appropriate if it was instrumental to safeguarding the life of people. His death On 13 May 1999, Saudi Arabia woke up to meet the reality of the death of Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin at the age of 88 years. After the Friday prayer on 14 May 1999, Several thousands of people headed by Crown Prince Abdullah, scholars, Fahd bin Abdulaziz, Prince Sultan, and many sheikhs from the Muslim nations conducted funeral prayers for the late Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz at Masjid al-Haram within the city of Mecca. He was later laid to rest at Mecca's Al-Adl Cemetery the same day. Conclusion Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin was one of the high-ranking scholars of Saudi Arabia. He dedicated his life to explore Islam and its teachings. He deployed his knowledge in a wide variety of careers, which he served diligently for the benefit of the Muslims within Saudi Arabia and the diaspora. His works and ideas remain embedded in his scholarly works reflecting subjects such as tafsir, fiqh, hadith, fariyad, and ta'id among others. This essay on Sheikh Abd al-Aziz bin Baz was written and submitted by user Neil T to help you with your own studies. You are free to use it for research and reference purposes in order to write your own paper. However, you must cite it accordingly.